Okay, yes, it's possible to rotate your eyes, but you can't do it without some practice. Our eyes have four major muscles that allow them to move up and down and side to side. There are actually two more muscles that we use without knowing as well. These muscles help you roll or rotate your eyes. We can focus on something rotating, and our eyes will start rotating with it. This helps us have a stable image and keep a clear vision, like an autofocus on a camera. When you move your head side to side and up and down, your eyes will move in the opposite direction. The average human eye has three cones, which lets us see red, green, and blue spectrums of light. All combined, this gives us the ability to see around a million different colors. Tetrachromats see the ultraviolet shades as well, as they've got four cones in their eyes. Pause here to quickly test how many colors you can count. There were 39 colors there. If you counted a lot, you might be a tetrachromat. Some animals, like bats and dolphins, can see using echolocation. There are also humans that can do something similar called flash sonar. They can use clicking sounds to make a 3D image of an area in their minds, allowing them to easily navigate through it. The more they click, the more flashes they get about a room or an area, giving them a better understanding of the place. Being pitch perfect is astonishingly rare. Less than 1 in 10,000 people have it. It allows people to accurately identify musical notes of all kinds. One of the many advantages of this talent is that it allows people to listen to a song and immediately know what key it's in. Hey, without music, life would be flat. People with dystochiasis are born with a second set of eyelashes that grow from the inner layer of the eyelid. While it may look pretty to some, these extra lashes can irritate the eye and cause problems like sensitivity to light, droopy eyelids, tearing, and inflammation. There are a few ways to treat the condition, like soft contacts, lasers, and cryotherapy. Dutch health guru Wim Hof claims that his breathing, meditation, and training have helped him gain all kinds of superhuman abilities. He's trained his body to adapt to extreme temperatures and even learned how to raise his own body temperature. He's also been able to adapt more quickly to altitude changes. He has even claimed that his training methods and strict diet and exercise regimen have improved his immune system. Now, we're meant to get anywhere from 7 to 8 hours of sleep every night to function the next day. But there are some lucky people out there that only need 6 hours or less a night. This is caused by a genetic anomaly, and there don't seem to be any adverse effects from having it. We have about 10,000 taste buds. But some people have many more than that. Super tasters! Thanks to their powerful ability to taste sweet things like oranges, strawberries, and candy are almost too sweet, while bitter things like broccoli, cabbage, spinach, grapefruit, and coffee are overpowering. Well, thanks anyway, but I'll keep what I have. Most people have a total of 24 ribs. No, not at the restaurant. In your body. There's a chance you might be one of the few that has 25 ribs instead. About 1 in 200 people have a cervical rib, a spare rib just above the first rib. It's usually not even noticed because it's above the collarbone and pretty thin. Hey, when's lunch? I got hungry for some reason. Chances are you have an any belly button. That's because only about 10% of the world's population have an Audi, making it pretty rare. It has nothing to do with how our umbilical cord is cut. Our belly button stores a bit of fat beneath it, and it's this that determines what kind of belly button you'll end up with. So don't blame the doctor. The type you have is completely down to genetics. If you've ever experienced high altitude, you should know how hard it is on your body. Even just walking up a hill can be a difficult task. Give it a few days, though, and things will become easier. Your lungs, blood cells, and body will adapt quicker than you think, letting you hold on to that precious oxygen for longer. This adaptation will last for as long as you stay up high, and you'll go back to normal after a while back at normal altitude. When we submerge ourselves in water, it causes our heart rate to drop and oxygen consumption to slow. In recent years, free divers have pushed the limits of human lungs by going down a record of 700 feet. One person held his breath for more than 22 minutes underwater. We don't know what the limits are yet, but people are testing the boundaries. When a person has a photographic memory or total recall, 
This is called eidetic memory. It's the ability to accurately recall sounds, images, or other things from your memory. Some can even be told a date in a calendar from years ago and tell you what day it actually was. Unfortunately, you can't get an eidetic memory with practice. You have to be born with it. An ultramarathon runner named Dean Karnazes once ran for 350 consecutive miles and didn't even sleep for three days. He's most famous for running 50 marathons in all 50 U.S. states in 50 consecutive days. He finished this achievement off by completing the New York Marathon in only three hours. Some people have an incredible ability to find their way without using a compass or even the stars. This unique navigational ability has been linked to the strength of the signals given off in a certain part of the brain, called the entorenal region. Place the back of your wrist and forearm on a table, then squeeze your thumb and pinky together. Do you see a muscle raise up in the middle of your forearm? If you don't, don't worry, it's vestigial. That means that it doesn't do anything useful anymore. Hey, wait, that's me. It's an old muscle that we used to use for climbing, and around 10% of the human population doesn't even have it anymore. If you can wiggle your ears, you can thank your auricular muscles. Those are the ones on the outside of your ear. Even if you can't wiggle your ears, the muscles are still there. Compared to other mammals, our ears can't move much. Some mammals can even fully turn their ears to locate sounds. Just watch your dog or cat. A dog's third eyelid might be a bit creepy the first time you see it, but we also have a third eyelid of sorts. But this human body part can't move by itself, it just covers a tiny part of the inside corner of your eye. It's likely that it used to serve a purpose, but it's pretty much useless now. Sometimes, you just need a really good cry. It's also good for you, too. Shedding tears when you cry helps release your stress hormones. It can also stimulate the production of endorphins as well, our body's natural answer to aspirin. Your brain replaces itself every two months, your liver every six weeks, your epidermis or the skin every month. Even your stomach lining replaces itself every few days. If your body didn't do this, the acids inside of your stomach wouldn't just digest food, they'd also start digesting you. So, alright, what's eating you? Oh, you. The human lungs contain around 1,500 miles of airways and a total surface area of about 754 square feet when laid flat. But I would suggest that you don't do that. Your lungs are on the clock 24-7, keeping you alive and breathing, taking 12 to 15 breaths a minute or about 17,000 a day. Your left lung is slightly smaller than your right lung to make room for your big heart. After years of wear and tear, your feet may weaken enough that they seem to grow. This can cause our arches to flatten, meaning broader and longer feet eventually. It won't happen to everyone, but people who get swollen feet or ankles are more prone. If it does happen to you, you've got time. By age 70 or 80, your feet would have only gone up one size. Taste is influenced a lot by the temperature of what you're eating or drinking. For example, hot coffee seems less bitter and tastes much better because the heat tricks our bitter-detecting taste buds. The same goes for cold coffee, too. The cold masks the bitterness flavor and creates a more pleasant aftertaste. Room temperature coffee doesn't smell the same or taste nice because the bitterness comes on more strongly. Brushing your teeth too aggressively is very possible, and it's not good for your teeth at all. It'll wear down the enamel and make them sensitive to hot and cold foods. Teeth don't repair themselves, so you gotta take care of them. Slow down your brushing and take a full two minutes to get your teeth properly clean. Um, don't forget the floss, too. Up, the phone's ringing. Must be something urgent. At 11 p.m.? Only, all the gadgets in the house are silent. It's your ears that are ringing. You can also hear some hissing, whistling, buzzing, and even roaring. But all this noise doesn't have an external source. Ooh, That's why it's known as phantom sounds. They can occur in one or both ears, constantly or from time to time. They're usually most noticeable at night when nothing distracts you. Hearing noise in your ears is called tinnitus. It's quite common and affects 15 to 20% of people. Tinnitus starts in the part of your inner ear shaped like a snail. It's called the cochlea. Your middle ear picks up sound waves. They get translated into electrical impulses in the inner ear. 
then, sensory nerves carry these impulses to your brain. If your inner ear works incorrectly, your brain can misinterpret the sounds. Tinnitus occurs when there are some changes in the cochlea's nerve. They can be caused by loud noise, like chainsaws, jackhammers, loud music, or shouting! Tinnitus can start after a head, neck, or ear injury, or after you begin to take certain medications. You can also hear ringing in your ears if you have some blood pressure issues. Elsewhere, in the amazing human body, some of the bacteria living in your gut can produce electricity. Shocking! They give off electrons, and this creates tiny electrical currents. That's likely to be the bacteria's backup system, their way to generate energy. Humans are the only animals that have chins. Even our closest genetic relatives, gorillas and chimps, lack this small piece of bone that extends forward from the jaw. Their lower jaws slant down and back from their front teeth. Scientists still haven't figured out this mystery. The opinions about why people are made this way differ. Some researchers think chins help us chew our food. Others are sure they have something to do with speaking. A few of us think it's simply a special place to grow a goatee. Blinking keeps your eyes clean and moist. But that's not all. Every time you blink, you take a micro nap. Researchers from Washington University have found out that blinking makes your attention sharper and works as a teeny recharge. Ever seen tiny dots traveling in squiggly lines, especially when you're looking at a bright blue sky? These dots are only visible for a second or so and might look like itty-bitty worms. Those are your white blood cells moving through the capillaries in front of the retina. That's the light-sensitive tissue at the back of your eyes. Curiously, most people don't even notice the dots unless asked to pay attention. The pineal gland in your brain handles the production of melatonin. That's the very hormone that regulates your sleep patterns. The gland looks like a pine nut, and that's how it got its name. The human brain is 73% water, and the same is true about the heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of liquid, you start to feel tired. It also makes your memory worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a dampener on your mood. By the way, your brain makes sure you don't drink too little or too much water. After you swallow some liquid, your mouth and throat start to fire signals to your brain, telling it to stop drinking. Otherwise, you'd be gulping down water for the entire 10 to 60 minutes it takes the liquid to get to your cells. Your eyes can see something for a mere 13 milliseconds, and your brain will already process this image. For comparison, the average blink lasts from 100 to 400 milliseconds. Even though the tongue isn't the strongest muscle in your body, it never gets tired. That's because of the way it's built. It's made up of eight interwoven muscles. But unlike other muscles in your body, these aren't situated around a supporting bone. The tongue structure is similar to an elephant's trunk or an octopus's tentacles. Your body emits visible light. Uh, that's why they call me Sunny. <laughs> You're the brightest at 4 p.m., and your glow is the least visible at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, this glowing is a thousand times less intense than what your eyes can see. Sweat is mostly water mixed with proteins, sugars, ammonia, and a lot of other stuff. It even contains tiny amounts of trace metals, like copper, zinc, nickel, iron, and so on. What makes sweat taste salty is the sodium it contains. Plus, the more salt you eat, the saltier your sweat is. Your body's trying to get rid of the excess, and the fastest way is to sweat it out. In an adult, the blood makes up 7-8% of the total body weight. About 55% of your blood is liquid plasma. The rest is red and white blood cells and platelets. They form clots and prevent bleeding. You can't swallow and breathe at the same time. The food you swallow and the air you breathe go down the same part of your throat at first. Only a bit deeper, the passage splits into the esophagus for food and liquid and trachea for air. When you swallow, your airway gets automatically closed off. This prevents you from accidentally inhaling food. But occasionally, it still happens. Your brain sometimes generates more than 48 thoughts in just one minute. That's almost 3,000 thoughts per hour and 69,000 per day. 
Fingernails grow faster on the dominant hand. If you use your right hand more, you'll have to trim nails on it more often. Fingernails also grow more quickly in the summer and during the day. You might keep in memory up to 10,000 different faces. Sure, it varies from person to person, and the average number is 5,000. It doesn't mean you can put a name to each of these faces. It's only about recognizing the features. Now, you might try to hide the truth, but your nose will always give you away. When a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes goes up. This phenomenon is known as the Pinocchio effect. Women have more taste buds on the surface of their tongues than men do. That's one of the reasons why 35% of ladies and only 15% of guys are super tasters. Those are people who feel flavors more strongly than others. Your teeth are the only part of your body that can't repair itself. But the enamel they're covered with is one of the toughest things in the human body. Your heartbeat often syncs with the music you're listening to. If a piece has a continuous increase in volume or tempo, like rock, it can make your heart rate faster. Some classic music lowers heart rate and blood pressure. This phenomenon affects everyone, from professional musicians to amateurs and music lovers. There are 2-5 to million sweat glands on your body. The sweat they produce is of two different kinds – stress sweat and regular sweat. Hey, don't sweat the small stuff, huh? The sweat caused by stress has fatty acids and proteins in it. And the regular sweat is mostly made up of water, salt, and a tiny bit of other substances. It's actually possible to brush your teeth too thoroughly and hard. This can wear down the enamel and make your teeth super sensitive to cold and hot foods. If you walked in the same direction for 12 hours a day, you would need around 800 days to travel around the globe. And don't forget your rubber boots for the ocean parts. If your stomach acid made contact with your skin, it would most likely eat a hole in it, all because of hydrochloric acid. This type of acid is incredibly potent. It can easily dissolve some metals, for example, magnesium or zinc. Hydrochloric acid is the main component of the gastric acid your stomach produces. It protects your immune system and gets rid of viruses and bacteria in the food you eat. This acid also helps your body break down, digest, and absorb all kinds of nutrients, including proteins. Your lips look red because there is a great concentration of miniature blood capillaries right below the skin. Your pinky is a powerful little thing. Without it, your hand would lose a significant part of its power. Your index and middle fingers cooperate with your thumb to grab and pinch, and your pinky, together with your ring finger, provides grip strength. The fattest organ in your body is your brain. Fat makes up at least 60% of its dry weight. This quality got the brain to the Guinness World Records. The organ contains around 25% of your body's cholesterol, which is vital for the brain's well-being. So, is that where the term fathead comes from? Your skeletal cells never stop regenerating. That's why you get a new skeleton every 10 years or so. This process slows down with age, and the regeneration takes longer. That's one of the main reasons why bones become thinner. And there's a newly discovered type of brain cells crucial for visual search. They're called target cells. Without their help, you wouldn't be able to spot an acquaintance in a crowd or your dog in the park. Interestingly, target cells don't care what the thing you're searching for looks like. All they want to know is whether an object is your target or not. Hey, it's not picky. Your heart is the size of your fist. Your brain two clenched fists. When you listen to music, your heartbeat syncs with its rhythm. You can't swallow and breathe at the same time. Trust me on that one. There are as many nerve cells in your brain as there are stars in our galaxy, about 100 billion. You're a half an inch taller in the morning than in the evening. You can thank gravity for that one. Also, why astronauts get 3% taller during their stay in the weightlessness of space. The average person breathes over 3,000 gallons of air every day, enough to inflate 1,000 party balloons. 
Your body contains enough blood vessels to wrap around the planet two and a half times. You spend four months of the year asleep. Ooh, in a lifetime, 26 years. And only six of those years will be spent dreaming. We forget 50% of a dream within five minutes of waking up. 10 minutes later, it's 90%. Here's the bad news. Your nose and ears are the only parts of your body that never stop growing. The human brain generates enough electricity to power a small light bulb. If your eye was a digital camera, it would have a resolution of 576 megapixels. The human brain could store the equivalent of 2.5 million gigabytes. That's 3 million hours of your favorite TV show. Each cell in your body contains 1.5 gigabytes of information. Do the math for your 100 trillion cells and see that you're one powerful walking computer. Your brain cools down when you yawn. Your ears work even when you're asleep, but your brain ignores the incoming information. The distance between your outstretched arms is your height. You renew your skeleton every 10 years. You lose about 100 hairs every day, and that's totally normal. Humans are the only creatures who sleep on their backs for a long time. Koalas, like humans, have their own unique fingerprints. Your tongue prints are also unique to you, but let's not lick the scanner. Scientists at the University of Pittsburgh found that blue and green-eyed people are less sensitive to pain than brown-eyed people. But lighter eyes are more light-sensitive than dark ones. The microorganisms in the human body outnumber cells 10 to 1. And together, all the bacteria in your body weigh about 4 pounds. The fastest-growing fingernail is the middle one. The slowest? Your thumb. Blondes have more hairs than brunettes and redheads. Your ability to distinguish smells uh, – let me take another run of that. Distinguish smells disappears when you sleep. And my ability to talk disappears randomly. There's enough iron in the body to make a 3-inch nail. Your hand without the pinky would lose half its strength. Never mind how you lost it. Ouch! People can't digest grass. Cows can because they have four stomachs. The mind thinks about 70,000 thoughts a day. A man will grow 40 feet of beard hair in a lifetime, the height of a phone pole. It takes just one minute for all five quarts of blood to get around the body. In a lifetime, the average person will walk the equivalent of three times around the world. A person can have from 250 to over 1,000 hairs in each eyebrow. Your eyebrows also have a lifespan – about four months for all the hairs to fall out and be replaced by new ones, thank goodness. Your eyes are the only organ that doesn't grow with age. Your body glows in the dark. It's just too weak for you to see it. 99% of all the calcium in the body is in the teeth and bones. The human eye can distinguish up to 10 million different colors. Most people will spend 4 months of their life waiting at traffic lights. What a waste of time! The muscles in your iris contract and expand to determine how big your pupils are. Your pupils get bigger when you look at someone you're attracted to. Your skin covers an area of 22 square feet. The thickest skin is on the soles of your feet. The thinnest is on your eyelids. Your stomach blushes when your cheeks do. The only part of the human body that can't recover on its own is the teeth. People can show up to 7,000 different facial expressions. Like this, or this, or even this. The largest organ of the human body is the skin, and it weighs 20 pounds. 
You can't sneeze with your eyes open or breathe while you hum. It's the rules. The bumps on your tongue aren't taste buds. They're called papillae. Not all papillae contain taste buds, but those that do can have 1 to 5 in each. Your bones are 30% water. The atoms in your body are 99% empty. And yet, you feel full after dinner. How's that? The brain grows for the first 18 years of life, then gets 5% smaller every 10 years after the age of 40. Well, that explains a lot, don't you think? Your stomach usually has a volume of one quart, but can stretch to hold one gallon. We spend 10% of our waking hours with our eyes closed just from blinking. The muscles that work your fingers are actually in your forearm. Your foot is the same length as your forearm. Same ratio with your thumb and nose. With proper training, a single finger could support your entire body weight. Your toenails grow three times slower than your fingernails. Your lungs aren't identical. The right one has three lobes and the left one has two. Your hair grows faster when you're sleeping. The only thing that grows faster than hair is bone marrow. Tooth enamel is the hardest tissue in your body. Your bones are four times stronger than concrete. The average person drinks enough water in a lifetime to fill 150 hot tubs. You have your own unique smell. I'm not touching that one. People lose half their taste buds by the age of 60. Your body releases enough heat in a half an hour to boil two quarts of water. Your brain uses 20% of that energy your body generates. Your body uses more energy to cool itself on hot days than to warm up when it's cold. People can go much longer without food than without sleep. Stomach acid can dissolve metal. It's so strong that the stomach has to create a new lining every 3-4 to days. So, what's eating you? The loudest snore ever recorded was 93 decibels, louder than a lawnmower. I think that was in my house. A single DNA molecule in one cell is 6 feet long. If you could unwind all the DNA in your body, it'd reach Pluto and back. But Pluto's not a planet anymore. The rule of threes states that the human body can go three minutes without air, three days without water, and three weeks without food. But not three seconds without the internet. Your brain forgets information to think faster and protect itself from emotional overload. Our eyes can see a candle flame up to 30 miles away on a clear night. Human DNA is 96% similar to a chimpanzee, 90% similar to a cat, 70% to a slug, and 50% to a banana. That has appeal. You share 99.9% of your DNA with any random person on the planet. A printed version of your entire genetic code would be over 260,000 pages long. That's about 200 large books. In terms of muscle, your tongue is like an elephant trunk and an octopus arm. Oh, that's just wrong. Your nails are made of the same stuff as a rhino's horn and a horse's hoof. And the rhino wants it back. We have nails to protect our fingertips. Without them, you wouldn't be able to grip things as well. You use 200 muscles just to take one step and 50 muscles just to use chopsticks. You use two fingers to play chopsticks. The word muscle means little mouse in Latin because that's what ancient Romans thought a flexed bicep looks like. The body's surface area could hold 110,000 mosquitoes at once and feed 15 million. Any volunteers? Most people speak about 125 words a minute. The brain can process 800 at the same time. Me? I can go 185 with wind gusts up to 250. 
Your skin completely renews itself every 27 days. You can't tickle yourself. Your brain already knows of your intentions and prepares your body for it. Humans are the only species with an outline that separates the lips from the surrounding skin. Your lips are red or pink because there are tons of capillaries right under their thin skin. Your ears produce more earwax when you're afraid. Boy, I must be terrified. Information travels to and from the brain going 270 miles per hour, faster than an arrow. The smallest bone and muscle in your body are both in your ear. Your head weighs as much as a gallon of paint, 10 pounds. And for me, it's almost as useful. Your eyes breathe. Yup, the cornea is the only part of you that doesn't have a blood supply. It gets oxygen straight from the air. Shark corneas are so similar to humans, they could be used for transplantation. Half the bones in your body are in your feet and hands. Come on, let's share, guys! Finally, cornflakes have more genes than people do. Your cereal has 32,000, you have just 20,000. Well, that would take a really big closet to hold 20,000 genes. And now I'm going to stick my head in a paint bucket. Bye for now! People with albinism have little to no melanin, the pigment that colors hair, skin, and eyes. It's a rare condition to have. In the USA, just 1 in 18,000 to 20,000 people is albino. But ocular albinism is even more unique. Experts don't know exact numbers, but they think only 1 out of 50,000 individuals has it. If a person has ocular albinism, nothing but their eyes gets affected. Their skin and hair might be a bit lighter than those of their family members, but the difference isn't that big. Bright sunlight makes 17-35% to of people sneeze. This phenomenon is called the photic sneeze reflex. In the Greek language, it's called sun sneezing. It happens when the nervous system misfires. When it happens, one of the nerves might get the reflexes wrong. And then, bright sunlight not only makes your pupils contract, but also activates the nose membranes. When natural, fair hair is rare in adults. It almost always darkens with age. People who are more likely to keep their hair color light are those living in the north. The Bajau is a group of nomadic people that live in the waters around the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Thanks to a rare DNA mutation, they can stay underwater for up to 13 minutes. The Bajau people have evolved spleens that are way larger than average. This feature provides them with a genetic advantage. Sea nomads need it to hunt for fish or look for underwater stuff that can be used in crafts. A particular gene mutation results in super-dense bones that are almost impossible to break. They're several times tougher than the average person's bones. These people's skin is also less prone to aging. It might sound cool, but there are drawbacks. When such tough bones grow, they often put too much pressure on the nerves surrounding them and the brain. There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. They help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around 1 million different shades. But those with tetrachromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. However rare this vision anomaly is, it's still much more common in women than in men. By the way, most people with tetrachromacy don't realize they see the world brighter than others. Only a bit more than 8% of people have counterclockwise hair whirls on their heads. A hair whirl can be single or double. Very few people have triple whirls, but those do exist. Not all experts agree with this theory, but some researchers claim there's a connection between handedness and the direction of a hair whirl. Left-handed people are five times more likely to have a counterclockwise whirl than those with the dominant right hand. Only 1 to 5 people in every 10,000 have an unusually shaped pupil. In most cases, it looks a bit like a keyhole or a cat's eye. This eye disorder is called iris coloboma. Scientists believe it's mostly genetic in origin. Super tasters are people who taste particular flavors more strongly than others. 
they have more taste buds. Those are small mushroom-shaped bumps littering the tongue. They're covered with taste receptors that tell your brain what you're eating. This feature also makes super tasters more sensitive to certain foods. For example, too sweet, bitter, or salty. They also have more pain receptors on their tongues. That's why such people avoid spicy food. The numbers vary around the world, but in general, 25 to 30 percent of people are super tasters. From 40 to 50 percent are average tasters, and 25 to 30 percent are non tasters. Those have poor taste perception. Less than 1 percent of the world's population has a rare condition called dextrocardia. That's when the heart points toward the right side of the chest, not the left one. In rare cases, people with this unique quality have all their internal organs on the mirror image side of the body. Only 1 to 5 people in 10,000 have what's called perfect or absolute pitch. It's the ability to identify and recreate musical tones. This feature often runs in families. It's also more likely to occur in people who started their musical training before they turned 6. Ancient Greeks had stories about fire-breathing creatures called chimeras. They were a fearsome mixture of a goat, lion, and snake. In real life, chimeras are people who have two different sets of DNA. Scientists have recorded no more than 100 cases of human chimerism. The DEC2 gene mutation allows people to get away with just a few hours of sleep a night and still feel great. Such short sleepers don't feel tired, and they never sleep in. Their usual wake-up time is 4 or 5 a.m. Wow, not me. Only up to 5% of people have this feature. Scientists from the University of California have also made an interesting discovery. They claim that people with a DEC2 mutation need less time to perform certain tasks than regular sleepers. Morton's toe is a foot structure where the second toe is longer than the first one. Only 3 to 22% of people in the world have their feet shaped this way. Michelangelo's David and the Statue of Liberty are among them. Unlike the majority of the world's population, 1.5% of people have just one palmar crease. That's the line running across your palm. Men are more likely to have a single palmar crease than women. Most often, this feature runs in families. Only 3% of people in the world have lines that form the letters X on both of their palms. In many cultures, this rare feature is believed to be a sign of a strong personality. One in every 500 people has an extra rib called a cervical. The average human has two dozen ribs, 12 on each side of the body. But those lucky ones can have 25 or even 26. Excessive ribs are more often found in women. They're located in the cervical spine area and grow just above the collarbones. Their size can be different, from just barely developed to fully grown ones. In most cases, cervical ribs don't affect a person's well-being, unless they grow too large. In this case, they do cause discomfort. No more than 50 people have ever had Rh null blood type, so precious that it was nicknamed golden blood. It can be donated to people who have incredibly rare blood types and can't accept any other. For the first time, golden blood was discovered in an Australian Aboriginal woman. If you have a tiny hole near your ear, you're unique. It occurs in only 5% of people in the world. In the USA, less than 1% of people are born with this hole. In Asia and some parts of Africa, the number is a bit higher, from 4 to 10%. This feature is often inherited genetically. It can be present on one or both ears. This distribution is 50-50. The hole may go all the way through, or it can be a dimple, dent, or even a small lump. There's a theory that the little hole is an atavism, left from the times when all living beings had gills. There's a gene mutation that helps people keep their bad cholesterol levels extremely low. In this case, the gene instructs the body to produce a protein that curbs the amount of cholesterol in the blood. Unfortunately, only 2-3% to of people have this useful ability. About 65% of the world's population have loop-shaped fingerprints. Another 30% of fingerprints are world-shaped. And only 5% of people have arch-shaped fingerprints. 
They can be plain or tented arches. Around 35% of the world's population don't have to worry about the pain and inconvenience of wisdom teeth breaking through the gums simply because they don't have them. But around 5 million not-so-lucky people go through wisdom teeth removal every year. Some people have more than one row of eyelashes. This phenomenon is a genetic mutation called dystichiasis. A person with this condition has a second set of eyelashes growing behind the first. All these thick, lush lashes sure look beautiful, but they can also cause some discomfort. Some hairs can start growing in the wrong direction or in the place where an oil gland is supposed to be. It can cause irritation and tearing. Experts are sure that Tibetan people have genetically changed to be able to live at high altitudes. They have a gene that helps to adapt to falling oxygen levels amazingly fast. This evolutionary mutation has been one of the fastest ever recorded in people. It took a mere 3,000 years to develop. Speaking of pillows, as I was about to, not all of them guarantee sweet dreams. Some of them make you sleep in an unnatural position and don't support your head. A pillow is not going to give you a backache all on its own, but it can make things worse. Having no pillow is better than a bad one. Test it out for yourself. If you wake up refreshed without one, it's time to chuck that thing out. To see if a pillow is giving you good head and neck support, put a book or something similar on it. Then take it off and watch. A good pillow will definitely spring back to its original shape in seconds. Give it a little help by washing it every six months. If you've got yourself a super comfortable pillow, make sure you change the pillowcase often. That thing is a sponge for germs, and it can even harm your skin and hair. You may also want to try a silk pillowcase. Ooh, it doesn't scratch your skin. And since silk absorbs less moisture than cotton, it won't dry out your skin as much. If detangling your hair when you wake up sounds like your normal morning routine, you might want to try sleeping without a pillow. We all toss and turn at night. Every time you roll over in bed, you rub your hair against the pillowcase. Doesn't matter if you're trying to fall asleep or if you're in a dream being chased by a pack of huge hungry rabbits. Your hair still pays the price. Another big no-no is going to sleep with wet hair. It causes hair damage, extra tangling, it can weaken your immune system, it's not hygienic, and it can help your pillowcase get nice and moldy. Ew! There are loads of pillow types, and different people need different pillows, depending on how they sleep. People who like sleeping on their stomachs need thinner and softer pillows. Back sleepers need the kind that's thicker and can support their head properly. If you change positions every 10 seconds, <laughs> like me, try to find a pillow where the filling is a bit loose so it can adapt to your changing sleep style. Sometimes, pillows can be the reason you wake up tired and grumpy. What do you mean? See? The wrong kind of pillow makes your neck muscles all tense. That's how headaches start. If your pillow's too large, your neck's gonna be bent all night. You'll feel uncomfortable in the morning, and it's pretty bad for your posture. Same thing happens when the pillow's just too soft or too firm. Ah, uh, it's just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Except without the porridge. If you usually sleep with a pillow, but for whatever reason want to try sleeping without one, you have to do it gradually. Reduce the support bit by bit. If you sleep on your front, try a thin pillow under your chest to get the right balance. If you already sleep without a pillow, make sure your mattress is holding up its end of the deal. Even though it feels like you're sleeping in a cloud of fluffy goodness, a soft mattress can make you overbend your neck when you sleep. If you feel cold, no matter how heavy your comforter is, try layering. Even if you use a few lighter blankets on top of each other, the air that gets trapped in between them heats up and keeps you warm. The opposite works just as well. Even a really lightweight sheet can betray you. It still traps warm air. Just use one, either a comforter or a sheet. If back pain just won't let you sleep on your side, a special pillow might just make all the difference. Put it between your legs to straighten up your hips. It's going to help your lower back out a lot. It works for knee pain, too. If you sleep on your back, just tuck one under your knees to ease the strain. 
If you find it almost impossible to fall asleep, you're probably not tired. If you're still up after 20 minutes, you should probably get up and do something relaxing. Some nice, calming music, maybe a little reading. Opening your phone's just about the worst thing you can do. Social media and news apps are designed to keep you awake. The worst thing you can do? Watch that second hand take its way around. Turn your clock away from you. Counting minutes is pretty stressful, even if you don't realize it. Check everything around you. There might be something obvious that's stopping you from falling asleep. Some sort of light that hits your eyes funny. Or a faucet that's dripping. 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 I'm sorry. Try not to drink anything at least two hours before you go to sleep. Unless you just love waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. It can be really hard to fall back asleep again. Give that last glass of water a pass, so to speak. You can drink two in the morning to make up for it. As for food, time matters. Don't eat anything at least an hour before bed. A tiny spoonful of chocolate ice cream is okay. A big dinner right before bed is like your boss handing you a project at 5 p.m. on a Friday. If you're hungry late at night, go for a snack, a few sips of milk, maybe some cheese. Oops. One study found that eating breakfast for dinner is really helpful if you want to fall asleep faster. Bananas, eggs, toast, they're all packed with potassium, protein, and carbs. All the things you need to help you relax and fall asleep. Brinner is the new dinner, so old dinner is the new lunch or something. Sleep isn't the only thing that makes you productive. There are lots of superfoods that can boost your productivity too. Berries are awesome for that. Most berries are packed with antioxidants that help your body and mind. But the darker the berries are, the more antioxidants they have. Blueberries are a great choice. Even chewing gum can help. Keep that jaw working and you're looking at some increased productivity, about 10%. Chewing keeps you focused. Hey, just look at cows. Talk about productivity. Chewing can help you think more logically. It also lowers your stress hormones, keeps you awake, and keeps everything minty fresh. Some well-placed tinfoil can dramatically improve the quality of your sleep. Most people use extra dark shades, but you can try covering part of a window with tinfoil. That part of the window where the morning sun bursts in on you while you're still asleep? Yeah. It also stops your bedroom from being a sauna in the summer. At nighttime, light isn't your best friend, but you actually do need light to sleep well. If you don't get enough sunlight during the day, you might be in trouble after sundown. Two hours of sunlight exposure a day can boost your sleep efficiency. The sun is your friend. Go out and say hello. If it says hello back, well, there might be something else wrong with you. You should definitely avoid blue light for at least two hours before bed. Blue light means one thing, screens. TVs, laptops, smartphones. Blue light tricks your brain into thinking it's still day. That's why it doesn't let you sleep well. If you can't fall asleep without scrolling your feed, you might want to download an app that blocks out blue light. Or just leave your phone in the living room. Some people are all about white noise, some soft hissing, or whales singing about, you know, whatever they sing about. They say it helps them fall asleep faster and sleep better. Do what works for you. Some people even put on some white noise while they're working or studying. You can buy a white noise machine online for about 25 bucks. Or if you live in a busy city, (laughs) just crack the window open. The best sleep you can get is at night. But if you're a major napper, make sure you set an alarm. 20 minutes max. Or instead of a nap, try taking a short walk. Washing your face. Maybe a glass of ice cold water. In your face. (laughs) But if you're gonna nap, don't do it after 5 p.m. Your body will get super confused, and you might find it really difficult to fall asleep later that night. And watch out for caffeine. It keeps you energized, which is great, as long as you're not desperately trying to fall asleep. There's caffeine in a lot of stuff these days, not just coffee. Check those labels. Chocolate, tea, ice cream, cereal, even some go-to pain pills. Double-check just to make sure. Oh, and sorry, my fluffy friends, beds are for humans only. 
pets love to leave dander, fleas, a ton of fur, pollen, and other allergens all over your pillows and comforter. Can't get Milo to sleep in his own bed? There are pros out there to teach your dog some good bed manners. Me? Well, I like the dog and the cat on the bed at night, even if they hog the covers a lot. Wow! Just one strand of hair can support about 3 ounces. On average, a person has about 150,000 strands. And when your hair is working as a team, it can support about 12 tons. That's two elephants. Um, not counting the peanuts. Your brain generates electricity, and it'd be enough to light up a small light bulb, if you could only figure out how. It doesn't hurt to cut your nails or hair, because the only part that's alive is under the skin. Also, nails grow faster in summer than in winter, even in places where there's not much difference between the seasons. Also, nails grow faster on your writing hand, probably because you use it more often and that stimulates the nails more. It looks like the pinky finger is weak, but that's not true at all. Without it, you'd lose 50% of your hand strength. It usually works together with your ring finger to provide power. The other three are more for grabbing stuff. Oh, and just like fingerprints, your tongue has a unique print too. But you can't use it to unlock your phone, at least not yet. Also, your tongue has a lot of fat in it. If you gain weight, your tongue does too. There's acid in your stomach that breaks down food. The acid is so strong that it could eat right through a piece of wood. The total length of all blood vessels in an adult is close to 100,000 miles. That's four times around the equator. In your lifetime, you produce enough saliva to fill two swimming pools. Our ancestors needed goosebumps to make their body hair stand on end and scare away any bad guys. We don't need that anymore, but we still get them because we haven't evolved enough yet to get rid of this feature. Now, you've probably never noticed, but you mostly only breathe through one nostril at a time. Every few hours, the nostrils switch jobs. That's why only one nostril gets stuffy when you have the flu. Most people think they have five senses, but that's not true. Scientists don't yet know themselves, but they think there's more than 20. There's sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste. And there are other senses like time, hunger, and thirst. Then there's proprioception, the sense of where your body is in space. The brain can't always tell the difference between intense happiness and intense sadness. It gets that you're experiencing a very strong emotion, but sometimes it gets a bit confused. That's why you might cry when you're very happy. Your eyes stay about the same size your whole life, but your nose and ears don't. That'd be so weird. Back in the day, all humans had brown eyes. Other eye colors developed as a result of a random mutation. Scientists think that while the first humans appeared on Earth around 6 million years ago, The first blue-eyed person appeared only 10,000 years ago. So it's pretty likely that all blue-eyed people on the planet have the same ancestor. Uncle Bob! All bones in the human body are connected to each other except one. The hyoid bone is U-shaped and located at the base of the tongue, holding it in place. Bones are stronger than steel. A strong, healthy bone could, in theory, handle the weight of five pickup trucks. Still, they're not the strongest body part. The strongest is tooth enamel. It's made of a bunch of different materials that make it damage-resistant. Teeth live a long time, lasting for hundreds of years. But of course, you still need to take care of them. They're the only body part that can't heal itself. Your heart works non-stop and beats around 3 billion times over the course of your lifetime. Just like your heart, your tongue never takes a vacation. Even when you sleep, it helps push saliva down your throat. By the way, where do you rest your tongue? If you keep it on the bottom of your mouth, you're doing it wrong. This posture might lead to some neck and jaw pain. If you keep it jammed up against your teeth, you're doing it wrong too. It can cause your teeth to shift and might lead to a bad bite. Instead, try to keep it sort of halfway, about a half an inch away from your teeth. Now, we can't breathe and swallow at the same time. That's because whatever we swallow and the air we breathe travel down the same path, at least at first. It's like there's a little guy directing traffic down there. Your eyes can breathe. The cornea is the only body part that doesn't have a direct blood supply. It gets oxygen right from the air. 
That's why when it's dry outside, your eyes might get a bit itchy. Everyone dreams. Some people say they've never dreamt a night in their life, but they just never remember any of their dreams. Some scientists think that the dreaming stage is followed by an active forgetting stage. It's probably because dreams aren't exactly full of important information, and our brain needs to clean up some extra space for something more useful. Those who are lucky enough to remember their dreams still end up forgetting about half within 5 minutes of waking up, and after 10 minutes, it's usually gone for good. When you blush, the lining of your stomach turns red too. It happens because blood starts to flow around more when you're embarrassed, as your body gets ready for something stressful to happen. Your face and stomach lining get more of it, turning them red. Also, humans are the only animals who can blush, or at least the only ones where you can see it so obviously. During one lifetime, the average human grows 590 miles of hair. The average man, if he never shaved, would have a 30-foot-long beard. Hair grows a little faster in warm climates because heat stimulates faster circulation in our bodies. Everything you'd ever need to know about you is all written down in one strand of hair. From a single hair, a scientist could tell you what you've been eating your whole life and what kind of environment you've lived in. On average, one human eats their way through 100,000 pounds of food in one lifetime. That's like 10 big hippos worth of food. Lips are one of the most sensitive parts of the human body. They have loads of nerve endings, even more than your fingers. Also, lip skin is very thin, so you can actually see the blood capillaries inside. That's why lips are red or pink, unlike the rest of your body. Lips are also very sensitive to sun damage, so remember to apply sunscreen on them. It'll help to preserve their health and fullness over time. In addition to your fingerprints, your iris, and your tongue, your lips are also unique. The total surface of your lungs is about the same as a tennis court. (coughs) Coughs and sneezes are real fast travelers. A cough can get up to 50 miles per hour. A sneeze is even faster, almost 100 miles per hour. Unless you use your fingers to help you, it's impossible to sneeze with your eyes open. Scientists don't really know what's going on there. Some say it's just a reflex, so you can't control it. Others think it happens to shield your eyes from whatever's flying out. All humans literally glow. The light comes from your body heat. It's actually a thousand times less intense than you're capable of seeing, but still awesome. The largest flash drive in the world is actually your brain. Well, anyone's brain. The neurons in it combine together in such a way that your storage capacity is about a million gigabytes. It's enough to hold 3 million hours of movies. That's like a 300-year-long movie night. Hey, pass the popcorn! You start feeling thirsty when you lose about 1% of your body weight. If you lose 5%, you might even feel like fainting. Fingers don't have muscles that make them move. The muscles that do that are located in the palm and the forearm. The word muscle actually comes from the old Latin word for mouse. That's what the Romans thought their biceps looked like. On average, in their lifetime, a person walks about 110,000 miles. That's four times the distance around our planet, or half the distance from the Earth to the Moon. So, remember to wear comfortable shoes. Yep, I think it's safe to say that falling from any height can be really dangerous, but especially when you've tumbled out of an airplane, and worse, without a parachute. Now, the trick here is to create drag to slow your descent. Use your shirt, pants, or do an air snow angel. Anything to slow you down a little bit. But hey, you've always wanted to make an impact, right? Well, check this out. A Yugoslavian woman was working as a flight attendant. She survived an incredible fall on January 26, 1972, after the plane she was working on exploded. Falling from a height of 33,000 feet, she managed to survive but spent the next year and a half recovering after waking up from her coma. Experts disagree on the right way to land, but there's definitely a wrong way – landing on your head. Do you remember the rule of three for us squishy human beings? Uh, That's you and me, by the way. Three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food. It's a great guideline, 
but some people manage to stretch it out a bit further. If watching a sunset, smelling flowers, or ordering that big juicy hamburger is important to you, well, you'd better start thanking that delightful gas, oxygen. Don't believe me? Try doing even one of those things without it. Two minutes without oxygen will cause the average human to pass out. After 10 minutes, well, there isn't usually a comeback to her. This varies, of course, from person to person, depending on their fitness levels. But we love to push the boundaries as humans, don't we? The longest someone held their breath for was an outstanding 24 minutes, 3.45 seconds, give or take. That's 100 times longer than the first airplane flight. Take that, right, brothers? Alex Segura Vendrell from Spain pushed the limits of breath holding in 2016 by floating in a controlled pool environment. Just before going under, he was gulping in air like a fish to try to get as much oxygen as possible. Strangely, holding your breath underwater is easier than trying it on dry land. Swimming activates your diver's reflex, slowing down our heart rate and metabolism. Not only is oxygen important, so is precious H2O, a hand-tasty food. Each cell in our body needs water to survive. If we can't replace the water loss quickly, we only have about three days to a week before it's all over. How humid the air is, our age, physical activity, and health play a huge part in water retention in our bodies. When we're running low on water, the important areas of our body, like the heart and brain, pull water from wherever it can. Like a sponge, these organs soak up everything until there's nothing left. In 1979, an Austrian man in a holding cell lasted 18 days without water. He allegedly licked condensation off the prison walls to stay hydrated. What's the scariest thing in the universe? The fridge is empty! Where's all the food? (laughs) Without any calories, your body starts to feed on itself. Not exactly the diet I had planned for this year. During the first few days, our carbohydrate reserves are turned into glucose. When that's all used up, our body starts to target fat, muscle, and other proteins, all the way down to the bones. Fasting is a common way to let our bodies use those extra reserves inside of us. Mahatma Gandhi's longest of many fasts lasted 21 days. The longest known fast was when a 27-year-old lived off water and vitamin supplements for 382 days and shrank from 456 to 180 pounds. Yow! Our bodies are equipped to survive without food for long periods. Our ancestors didn't exactly have a supermarket to go to. This makes us pretty good at dealing with starvation. We humans can cope with many extreme survival situations. But how long can you swim in freezing water without turning into a popsicle? What happens if you're stuck in the desert or at the top of a mountain? Climbing the peaks of the world, like the Rocky Mountains, the Swiss Alps, or even Mount Everest, is challenging on a good day. But the real danger is altitude sickness. It affects about half of all climbers. Starting at roughly 1.5 miles up, the lack of oxygen can cause dizziness, tiredness, and headaches for some. Others can even get insomnia. This is just the start of a whole bunch of symptoms that affect our bodies. Consciousness becomes a big problem for most people at 3 miles up without proper preparation. Ascending too quickly can even lead to fluid in your lungs or even worse. The thing about altitude sickness is that it doesn't care if you're old or young, male or female, a couch potato, or an athlete. Everest is 5.5 miles high and the ultimate challenge for climbers. That's like hiking up 20 Empire State Buildings or two times the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Austrian Felix Baumgartner pushed the altitude tolerance limit on October 14, 2012. He jumped from 128,000 feet up. That's nearly 24 miles. It's no surprise that he's also the first skydiver to go faster than the speed of sound, reaching a mind-boggling 833 miles per hour. He definitely had the right equipment, like a pressure suit with oxygen and safety checks in place, which goes to show you, if you're going up high, remember the five Ps. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Surviving extreme heat isn't just about the temperature. Humidity is the real danger to us. The less humid the air is, the more water stays where it belongs, in our body. 
Ever walked into the sauna and realized that it's over 230 degrees? That's so hot and humid, you'd probably only last about 3 to 4 minutes max. Wait, humans can't melt, right? Above 104 degrees, there's a real chance of heat stroke. It doesn't sound like a big change from our usual body temperature, but it is. Just imagine getting caught in a desert for a few days. And not just any desert, the world's hottest. The hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth was in Nevada, a crazy 134 degrees. Cooling way down really quickly can help relieve cramps, headaches, and even nausea. But breathing can become kind of impossible once your organs start to shut down and hypothermia sets in. As soon as our bodies drop below our natural body temperature, our muscles start to stiffen. That's why you stop feeling cold and pain after a while. There just aren't any nerve endings functioning anymore. Shivering quickly to produce heat is our body's natural way to keep our organs warm. This only works for cold air, though. In cold water, shivering drains your body heat even faster. If you've never heard of the 300 Club, you're not alone. A base in Antarctica has found a great way to test the extreme limits of the human body in the most peculiar way. Participants at the station warm up in the sauna, which is heated to 200 degrees. Then they pull on their boots and run outside, where it's minus 100. Not only do they have to endure the 300-degree temperature change, But they've also got to run around the South Pole before coming back to the sauna to warm up again. Oh, am I tired? Time for a little snooze. Sleep is very important. Maybe that's why getting out of bed in the morning is so tough. We need sleep to recharge our body from the long day we've just had, leaving us refreshed and alert when we hear that alarm. Our brain can turn all fuzzy without enough sleep, and a good 8 hours is perfect for a healthy immune system. Sleeping improves our memory, our heart, and puts us in a better mood for the day. Randy Gardner and his friends tried to test the limits of staying awake. It was for their science fair project. They managed to stay awake and functioning for 11 days and 25 minutes. Even when tested during and after the experiment, Randy could play basketball and had no abnormal brain waves. Now, it's almost impossible to calculate the exact g-force that would harm a human. That's because there are three types of g-force out there – side to side, up and down, and forward and backward. The danger lies in how long we have to sit there while we're being thrown around like a rag doll. The longer we sit there, the more it affects our bodies. We experience g-force at home simply by sitting down on the couch too quickly, sneezing, or having someone slap our back a little too hard. Pilot John Stapp demonstrated that a human can withstand over 40 Gs. That's nearly 10 times the amount an average racing driver feels. The experiment only went on for a few seconds. But for an instant, his body weighed almost 7,000 pounds. Survival isn't always about taking on the elements. Sometimes, it's fighting against time. The current record for the longest living human is Gene Kalman, who was born in 1875. Yep, your brain will grow by roughly 2% if you venture into space. Under normal gravity, it is thought that fluid in the brain naturally moves downwards when we stand upright. But there is evidence that lack of gravity prevents this, which is why fluid accumulates in the brain and skull. While a bunch of flowers may be fragrant for you, there are people with cacosmia who would beg to differ. They perceive all the smells out there as something odorous. Well, that stinks. Speaking of which, out of all the senses we have, smell is the most acute one. We remember 65% of smells after a year, but only 50% of what we've seen over the last three weeks. We also get a new nose every 28 days, because the nose cells are renewed every four weeks. We don't smell when we sleep. Well, of course, unless you haven't bathed in a while. Your sense of smell goes to sleep when you do, which is why it's almost impossible to notice a gas leak at night. While sleeping, we rely only on sound because the sleep can be disrupted by noise. Almost half of your taste buds will have gone away by the time you turn 60. So maybe you will finally start eating those broccoli. Your sense of smell gets less acute as you get older as well. As for taste again, 
we mostly rely on our smell, since it helps us perceive up to 95% of the flavor. Without the sense of smell, it'd be hard to tell an apple from a turnip. Now, when you cough, you release the air at about 60 miles per hour, so mind the speed limit. Hiccups is a two-step process. First, you draw in a lot of air because of a muscle spasm, and then bang! The airways are closed, the air is blocked, and the famous sound goes outside. We need ears, not only for hearing, but for balance, too. Our vestibular system occupies the inner ear. Canals in your inner ear contain fluid and tiny sensors helping you keep the balance. By the way, ears have bones. These are also the only bones that never grow. We can hear thanks to these little guys since they transmit sound vibrations. Doctors call them oscular chain, and it's made up of malleus, incus, and stapes, nicknamed hammer, anvil, and stirrup, which are integral parts of the middle ear. Our ears keep growing throughout our lives. They sweat too, and earwax is actually a kind of sweat they produce. Oh, by the way, the nose never stops growing either. Perhaps from all the lies. <laughs> Your heart is the only muscle that never gets tired. The aorta is massive. Its diameter is almost as large as a hose in your garden. All the bones in our body are connected to each other except for the hyoid, which doesn't articulate with the other bones. This bone serves as support to your tongue, and it's one of the rarest bones to break. If you have red eyes in a photo, blame it on bouncing light. The flash jumps off the capillaries in your retina, creating that effect. As for eyes, the coolest camera so far has 200 megapixels. The human eye has 576. That's why sunsets are so much better in real life than in photos. A roller coaster actually tosses your organs around. When you feel like your stomach's falling down, it's really flipping inside your body. Lips are much more sensitive than fingers, having around a million nerve endings. They are 100 times as sensitive as the tips of the fingers. Grooves and furrows make our lip print unique, just like fingerprints are. They also remain unchanged throughout our life. Oh, the tongue print is unique too, by the way. Even though all the people on Earth have an absolutely unique smell, identical twins smell exactly the same. It must be because they have identical genes. Usually, we shed about 50 to 150 hairs a day. An average lifespan for hair is 5 years, and as soon as an old hair says goodbye to your scalp, a new one starts growing immediately. In your body, you carry enough bacteria to fill a can. Bacteria makes about 3 to 5 pounds of your weight, representing 2% of your total weight. Still, most of them are the waste that our body has. A human being has about 20,000 to 25,000 genes. Seems impressive, right? Well, cornflakes have more genes than we do. Luckily, it's about sophistication, not the quantity. Anyway, cornflakes 1, humans 0. We consist of many chemical elements, including iron. The iron in our bodies is enough to produce three nails, each one inch long. The carbon that we have can be used for 900 pencils. Our feathers can be used to make quill pens. Wait, that's birds. Never mind. Our liver has a superpower of regenerating if part of it was removed. It can grow back to the size that your body needs. Fat helps our bodies consume vitamins. Such vitamins as A, D, K, and E can be properly absorbed only when fat dissolves. Our bodies have enough fat to produce 7 bars of soap. Uh, don't try this at home. When we're awake, our brain may produce enough energy to turn an electric bulb on. It has 10 watts of power. What's that about? Our belly buttons have an entire animal encyclopedia in them, with a range of about 70 different bacteria. Some of them can be also found in the soil of Japan and even in polar ice caps. Our bodies actually glow. Anyway, we can't see that with an unaided eye because the light we emit is 1,000 times less intense than the minimum level we can perceive. Speaking of which, carmine used blushes and lipsticks is red dye made up of ground-up beetles. Oh. Saliva helps to taste food. Our taste buds are ready to perceive it 
only when it's dissolved by saliva. An eyelash is here to stay for 150 days only. The world eyelash record was about 3 inches long. They're also home for tiny mites. We blink about 4,200,000 times a year, at least once every 8 seconds. Could be cool if we were given a cent every time we blink. We could make more than $100 daily. It may sound crazy, but our bones are stronger than lots of building materials. A cubic inch of human bone can bear about 19,000 pounds, making it four times stronger than concrete. The only thing that makes our blood type different is sugar. A, B, and AB types have sugars, while O has none, which makes it perfect for donors. No sugar doesn't make O type less sweet. In fact, it attracts mosquitoes even more than the other blood types. People have only 8 blood types, while cows have 800 and possibly more. Like what? Moo positive and moo negative? Our fingernails grow way faster than toenails. They grow almost 4 times slower because they have less damage than fingernails. Even though we stumble on them often, sudden circulation bursts usually don't last long. Nails don't only help us catch random tiny objects and peel the stickers off. If you didn't have a rigid structure against which to press, you wouldn't be able to judge how firmly to hold anything. Very few people can actually digest milk. The thing is, there's some special enzyme, let's call it a little helper, that breaks down the sugars any milk has. When people grow up, they run out of this enzyme. This sugar's called lactose. So adults that can't digest it are lactose intolerant. 68% of the world's population can't actually digest milk. If you're sleeping, it doesn't mean your whole body rests. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take a lot of time. Humans can't multitask. Really? We need time to switch from one task to another. But if we try to tackle several things at the same time, it's not going to be very productive. Try this one. Lift your right foot and start rotating it in a clockwise direction. Try to write the number 6 with your big toe in the air. Now, check the direction your foot's moving. It's moving in the opposite direction, because to write the number 6, you need to make a counterclockwise movement. It actually takes a bit longer to start a new habit. It's not 100% true that 18 or 21 days are enough, as many people think. The process of getting a new habit can take up to 254 days, but on average, it takes around 66 days for a new habit to become automatic. Just a bit more! You can already see the finishing line! Go! You're drenched in sweat, but it was worth it! (laughs) Running the 5K everyone said you wouldn't finish. You've proven all of them wrong. But now, all you can think of is a cold shower. It's scorching hot outside. Not a great day for a run, but at least it's over. On these occasions, cold showers are great. For one thing, they help you cool off. They also treat your muscles that desperately need a bit of attention after all that exercise. But what if you decided to take a cold shower every day for a whole month? It's only day one and you already think it's not a very good experience. You know you're about to start the experiment, and you've been dreading it ever since you went to bed yesterday. Anyway, it's time. You just turned off the alarm and you have to get up to go to work. A shower not only helps you get clean, but also gradually wakes you up. That is, if it's a hot shower. A cold one will make you alert right away. You open the tap, but you aren't quite sure what to do. Do you pluck up all your courage and step under the water? Or you do it slowly and carefully? Not sure which one is worse. It's the first day and you're already feeling brave. So you just jump in like the fearless person you are. Ah! It's freezing cold! But as the cold water hits your skin, your body starts to get used to this temperature. And the shower becomes more and more bearable as far as it goes. Take several deep breaths, it might help. You're instantly more alert, though. That's one of the good things about cold showers. Your body was warm before, and the shock it feels not only increases your oxygen intake, but also makes your heart rate go up. It's like a rush of adrenaline. 
thinking back to a few days ago when you ran that 5K, the cold shower you took did make you feel great. That's because cold water has special properties that help your sore muscles recover. And since running for that long was no joke, the shower acted almost like a day in the spa for your body, which might be the next best thing to do after a tiring race. Two weeks go by and you're halfway through the experiment. Ah, it's 7 a.m. Time for another cold shower. Okay, here we go. After the shower's taken, you're out the door. Once you step foot in the office, the first thing your colleagues notice about you is that you're literally glowing. It's not the first time they've seen it, but you're even more radiant than usual today. Your hair looks amazing. It's healthy and shiny. You can't help but think to yourself, it has to be these awfully cold showers. And you're right, it is because of them. As it turns out, cold water makes your hair stronger and closes the hair cuticles. All this means your hair looks and is healthier than ever. Hot showers can dry the skin on your head. Steam isn't your friend either when it comes to the health of your hair. As for cold water, it doesn't wash away natural oils from your hair. These very oils are what gives it that shiny, healthy look you've got right now. Your skin looks great too, and again, all thanks to cold showers. One more thing you've come to notice with time is that you feel more energetic in the morning. That's because of how alert you become when cold water hits your skin. It's as if you instantly gain some superpowers. Instead of being sluggish for the first few hours of work, you're unusually productive. You manage to finish your tasks faster than ever. A report that used to take the whole morning is now ready in a few hours. You've also been breathing better, and mornings have a different feel to them now. A walk you take right after a cold shower has never felt so good. It might also help that it's summer and mornings are pretty hot. You go outside with your hair still a bit wet and your body cooled down. The sunshine is on your face and you feel incredible. When you're done with your walk, your hair is completely dry and your body is warm again. When it's time to go to work, you're alert and more than ready to face the day. But why did you decide to take a cold shower every day for the entire month in the first place? It's like waking up and taking a dip in a freezing cold pool in the middle of the winter. Well, things were too comfortable for you, and your routine was getting dull. You woke up, turned off the alarm. With your eyes still half-closed, you headed to your bathroom. You showered, got into your car, arrived at the office. That was it. Taking freezing cold showers was a new way to keep things interesting and exciting. And not only that, before you started your experiment, you noticed that your scale showed a couple of extra pounds. Those weren't welcome. Good thing cold showers have a way of helping with that, too. There are some fat cells in your body. They're called brown fat. These cells can help generate heat when you need it. During a cold shower, your body definitely needs to warm up. So the cells get to work burning fat to produce heat. This is what helps you to lose weight. Brown fat cells are usually stored around the neck and the shoulder areas. And as luck would have it, these are exactly the places the water keeps hitting when you're in the shower. Another reason to start taking cold showers is that your immune system will become stronger. Colds? Nah, never heard of them. Cold showers are quick, too. Obviously, you won't want to stay under this freezing water for too long. So you'll probably take no more than 5 minutes to finish getting clean. Maybe you're one of those people who jump in the shower and stay there for an hour. Well, this month, your water bill might look much more appealing. If after hearing all this, you can't wait to start an experiment of your own, here are a few tips. Close your eyes before going in. Think to yourself, it's just a shower and it'll be over in no time. You don't have to start with freezing water immediately. You can make it lukewarm and then slowly turn it down. Some might say this is cheating. I say it's adaptation. Mm -hmm. Control your breathing. Take long breaths while you're in. This will make the whole experience more tolerable. When you get out of the shower, you'll feel great about yourself. Grab a warm drink if your body is still shivering. But you shouldn't take such a shower if you're already cold. Then it'll have the opposite effect to what you want to achieve. You might even end up getting sick. So, if you feel unwell, stick to a hot shower. After all, it's what your body's used to. A hot shower can open up your airways, and it means you'll breathe more freely and overall feel better. 
Now, picture this. You're still up at 1 a.m., ready to go to bed. You do your evening routine before hitting the sack. And sooner rather than later, you're already relaxing under your bed sheets. The clock starts ticking, and boom, it's already 2 a.m., and you're rather alert. Okay, this is it. You put your phone away and close your eyes. But a half an hour later, you're still staring at the ceiling, wondering why you can't fall asleep. Well, here's a trick for you. Get out of bed and go take a warm shower. Chances are, an hour later at the most, you'll be asleep. It won't be an instant remedy, but it can help. You'll feel more relaxed as soon as hot water starts to hit your shoulders and back. It'll help to reduce your body stress. And when you finally leave the shower, your body will feel not only calm, but also refreshed. A warm shower also works great if you're having a headache. And if you want to step it up a notch, take some essential oil for relaxation to set the mood. No matter in which direction you decide to turn the faucet, a shower will always have its benefits. What? What's happening? You were so tired, couldn't wait for your face to hit that fragrant pillow. You could barely hold your head up at 9 p.m. Now you're just rolling around in bed, changing positions, everything so annoyingly sudden. Is it better to cover your feet or leave them uncovered? Should you sleep on your back, front, left, or right side? Ah, oh. There's some moonlight coming through your window, so you take a peek at the other bed in the room. Your friend over there is sleeping so deeply. Asleep after about a minute. So unfair. You're spending the night because tomorrow you're both taking a small trip to a nearby town. Of course, you'll have to get up at 5 a.m. Yay! Oh, and just look at the time now. Why can't you fall asleep? Why? Well, last week, you and a couple of friends went camping in the woods. And your struggles were similar. You got very tired after a long day of carrying all your stuff, walking around, preparing food, hours talking by the campfire. Your eyes were half closed. You thought you'd fall asleep in seconds. But then, nothing. Eyes wide open, every little thing bothered you, and no sleeping position was right. So I ask you, why? The first night effect, that's why. That's what you call it when you have sleep struggles in a new place. Sleep is a great thing, but evolution has made it a bit inconvenient for us from time to time. While sleeping, the brain actually shuts off for a couple of hours. That leaves you pretty unprotected. You can't spot any potential danger or defend yourself if something happens. There are animals, like dolphins and whales, that developed a sleeping system where only one part of their brain rests at a time. The other part is awake and ready to roll. We have a somewhat similar thing going on in our heads. Not that there are any dangers in your friend's room. Although, when you think about all that dust under the bed, who knows what's hiding under there? We have certain instincts that showed up a long time ago back when our ancestors lived in caves and knew that if they slept like there was no tomorrow, there might not be. That's why they also knew it wasn't safe to sleep outside their cave. That's most of the reason behind this first night effect thing. If you sleep in your own bed, in a room you feel comfortable in, your brain is like, phew, okay, you're safe now. But if you go to a new place, Nothing helps, not even a comfy bed, a silky pillow, or the fact that you're at your good friend's place. Your brain knows you're far away from your cave, so it can't relax and let you fully fall asleep. It's a little bit like with dolphins. One part of our brain is resting, but the other is carefully listening in case something unpredictable happens. Your brain won't bother you with this half the brain is sleeping and half not thing forever. When you spend two nights in a row in the same place, your brain is more likely to think, whew, it's safe here after all. Although that pile of dust still kind of worries me, and it'll probably let you fall asleep. Now, the first night effect is not that serious if you only experience it occasionally. But if you change locations really often, you could spend most of your time tired, unproductive, or facing some other issues. Our brain has some patterns that evolution gave it, but luckily, it's also quite flexible. 
You can trick it and help yourself overcome the first night effect. Since your brain is afraid of the fact that you're in an unknown space, you can make it more familiar and show your brain everything's okay. You might bring something you like with you. Maybe your favorite pajamas, your pillow, that soft blanket you wouldn't change for the world. Do you usually drink warm milk before going to sleep? Do the same thing at your new place. Help your brain recognize it's time to relax. Go to sleep at the same time you usually do. Have some exercise rituals before bed? Yeah, me neither. But whatever routine you have before going to sleep, do it at this new place too. If you're booking a room at a hotel, try to find one that has a bed similar to the one you have at home. If you usually sleep in a double bed, it may feel weird sprawled out in a king size. Or just bring along your favorite pajamas. It's cheaper. Nothing you do is guaranteed to help, but it's worth a shot. Side note. Don't you get annoyed when you meet someone who can just sleep anywhere? It feels really, really great to lie down, tuck yourself under a warm pile of blankets, and... (sighs) Oops, sorry. Mm. Anyway, sleep's important. We literally need it to survive, just like we need food or water. We spend around one-third of our lives sleeping. Scientists still don't know all the reasons why we sleep, but here's what they've got so far. We sleep to store energy. Eight hours of good sleep can produce enough energy for us to have an energetic, productive day. Our body needs to restore itself while sleeping. Hair and nails grow. Muscles repair themselves. All that and more happens while you sleep. No effort needed. Then there's brain function. If you put a book under your pillow during the night hoping your brain will somehow read it and be prepared for tomorrow's final, not gonna happen. But if you study hard and take in a lot of facts, a good night's sleep can definitely help you remember everything. A brown bat sleeps almost 20 hours a day, while a giraffe only sleeps a tiny bit, usually in many 5-minute power naps. That poor giraffe doesn't know what it's missing. Cats definitely know how to enjoy life. They spend two-thirds of their life sleeping. Randy Gardner set the record for the longest period without sleep in 1964. He was 17 when he stayed awake for 11 days or 264 hours. Do not try this at home or anywhere. Peter Powers decided to set the opposite record and stayed asleep for 8 days straight. Ah, That's awesome. How come he didn't have to get up to use the bathroom? If you lie down in bed and fall asleep almost immediately, that means you're really, really tired and sleep-deprived. Ideally, it should take you around 10 to 15 minutes to fall asleep. There are two specific times each day we feel really tired – 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's when we feel like taking a nap after lunch instead of getting on with our work. Show this video to your boss next time you're caught snoring in the office after your lunch break. We're actually the only mammals that delay sleep on purpose. Mm, And obviously the least cool mammals ever. Back in the day, only 15% of people dreamt in color. Now, 75% of us do that. Some folks think it's because our TVs are in color nowadays. Speaking of, we spend around 2 hours in dreamland every night. But if you want to remember your dreams, you should write them down right after you wake up. Wait too long, and you'll forget all those awesome superpowers you had. Over the course of an average night, you might change sleeping positions around 20 times. Your favorite position can say a lot about your character. Lying on your back with your arms up by the pillow is called the starfish position. This type of sleeper tends to be a good listener and a selfless person who likes to help others. Also, this sleeper might let their guard down more easily. Then there's the free-faller position, where you're on your stomach with your hands up by the pillow and your head turned to the side. Some say these sleepers don't take criticism well and tend to be pretty direct. Finally, the yearner is when you lie on your side with both of your arms stretched out in front of you. This type of sleeper is a bit complex, but also very open-minded. They're slow to make a decision, but they stick to it once it's made. Now, the kind and style of the jammies you wear to bed also says a lot, but we'll save that one for another video. (laughs) The last thing you remember is falling. 
You wake up at a hospital, surrounded by doctors and scientists. How do you feel? They ask. You realize it's hard to breathe. It feels like a lump stuck in your throat. Your body's burning, sweat covering your skin. Your eyes feel bad too, so you can't see people's faces. Don't worry, the doctor says. There was an accident, but everything's all right now. You've survived. You want to say something, but words won't come out of your mouth. Only a loud cough. You can't see, but feel that people around are terrified. In a moment, you understand why. A sticky, dense, fibrous substance spits out instead of saliva. You start to panic. Your pulse quickens. Several doctors hold you and tie you to the bed. They give you a sleeping pill, and you pass out again. You have a nightmare where a thousand little spiders cover your body completely. You're calling for help, and four glittering spider eyes are staring out of your mouth. You wake up screaming. But this time, there are no people around. Surprisingly, you feel great. There's nothing stuck in your throat. Your body is cooled down, and you're full of energy. You get out of bed, go to the mirror, and freeze in horror. A small leather pouch has formed on your throat right under the chin. You take two deep breaths to calm yourself and remember everything. You're a biologist and have spent the last few years studying spider silk. It's one of the most durable and versatile materials on Earth. A strand of web is several hundred times thinner than a human hair. It's a dense rope woven from hundreds of nanofibers. Spiders make their webs from silk, a natural fiber made up of protein. As a scientist, you've been trying to create an artificial spider web, copying all the features of the original. If used properly, it can be employed in construction, medicine, and many other areas. There are about 50,000 types of spiders in the world. Most of them don't create webs, but produce silk. The properties of all webs are different, and you study each of them. In your lab, several thousand spiders live in large animal cases. On the day of the accident, you combine natural fibers of hundreds of the most incredible spiders to produce super silk, a versatile material that can replace plastic, rubber, metals, and wood. You place the silk in a little box that mimics the spider's abdomen. You put it on a living arachnid and placed it in a special large tank so it could spin a web inside. A few hours later, you return to the lab. You climb to the top of the tank, open the heavy lid, and see a huge glittering web of the most perfect silk in the world inside. You touch it with the tip of your finger and suddenly realize you can't pull it back. The more you struggle, the stickier it gets. Some spiders use electricity to catch their prey. They cover their web with a special glue with electrostatic properties. This glue is immediately attracted to any objects in the air. It can be pollen, insects, and now it's your body. Thanks to this property, you can easily get tangled and stuck inside the silk. The web is wrapping around your arm and pulling you inside the cauldron. You fall in and black out. Scientists come to your room and tell you that the super silk spider wove a cocoon around your body but didn't bite you. You spent several hours wrapped in a thick cobweb before your colleagues found you in the tank. Most of the silk had been absorbed by your skin. Now your organism has synchronized with the silk and you can produce spider web. The spider glands are right next to your salivary glands now, so there's a pouch on your throat. Right now, you can spit webs. But in the future, the silk will be able to stand out from other parts of the body. You're scared, but fascinated. Can't wait to start experimenting. You go to the testing grounds close by the lab. There, you spit your webs into a thick wooden log. You stick the other end of the web to a log lying on the other side of the area. The silk is elastic. You send a light electrical discharge through the web with a shocker. The silk shrinks, and the two logs crash into each other. You want to test the strength. The strongest web belongs to Darwin's bark spider. Its silk is twice stronger than any other. You have also acquired the properties of this web. Assistants bring the construction crane to the testing grounds. You create a long silk line and stick it to the crane like a cable. The web lifts and holds a cement block weighing several tons. Small pouches form at the tips of your fingers. Now you can produce the web from under your fingernails and release it over long distances. 
You go to the lab, look out the window, and let out thin streams of silk. The web falls down but doesn't touch the ground. Small, sticky balls form at the web's ends. You understand what kind of spider you got this web from. The red-backed spider from Australia weaves a web with sticky silk lines that stretch to the ground like a beaded curtain. When ants or crickets hit one of these beads, the web catches them and lifts the helpless creatures into the air. Of course, you don't forget to have fun. You decide to prank your colleagues and spread these silk lines all over the lab. A couple of hours later, you see several scientists hanging in the air and asking you to stop this. You spin a web above the floor and jump on it from a height as if on a trampoline. Super Silk has also given your bones and muscles strength and flexibility, so you're not afraid to hurt yourself. You wrap the silk around your palms and fingers to try to climb the wall. You put your palms on the wall, but tear the paint and plaster off and fall on the floor. Another spider feature has been discovered. You throw the web from the fingers and don't see it. If you stick this web to any object and pull it towards you, it may seem that you have telekinesis. Some spider species can produce silk that doesn't reflect ultraviolet light. That is, you're weaving a transparent web. Also, you have silk that reflects ultraviolet light and appears blue at a certain angle. But the coolest thing is the golden web. In tropics, some spiders imbue silk with a special substance that gives the web a golden hue. With these abilities, you design beautiful patterns. You leave the lab and head into the woods located not far away. Here, you notice that hundreds of thousands of spiders are crawling towards you. But don't worry, they don't want to attack. Spiders can cover their webs with special pheromones that attract other spiders. Now, they feel those through your skin. You spit a spider web with a big and heavy sticky ball at the end. Some species produce such silk and use it like a maze to hook insects. You also swing this heavy ball and break a tree with it. Spider silk is sterile and has antibacterial properties. You create a web that works more effectively than a medical patch. The only problem is it's difficult to tear it off from the skin. You come to a nearby lake to check out another amazing silk property of one special spider. The one that lives underwater the diving bell spider. It creates a silk cocoon that resembles a bell. The spider fills this waterproof bubble with a big supply of oxygen and lives inside it underwater. You release the light silk from your fingers and mouth and weave it into a large ball. Then you throw it into the water and get in. You feel like you're inside a submarine slowly sinking to the lake bottom. Inside, you cover yourself in water-repellent silk and create a layer of air between it and your body. You come out of the cocoon and swim underwater like a scuba diver. The air runs out and you rise to the surface. You attach strong elastic silk to two trees and grip the strand in the middle. You stretch the web like a slingshot and jump. You fly above the trees and shout with delight. You fly past the testing ground, the lab, and… wait. How do you land? You're falling straight into the trees. The last thing you remember is falling. Eh, you're in the hospital again. The body is hurting because of your not very smart experiment. You feel something's changed. The doctors tell you the silk has completely dissolved in your body and you can no longer produce the web. Well, it was still worth it, you think. You're a scientist who spent the last few years studying brain abilities and building a machine that can upload any data into a human mind. Want to become a lawyer? Upload all the law knowledge into your brain. Need to learn a new language? Just put on a special headset that connects to your mind and downloads all the necessary information through the computer. Usually, you lose consciousness for a couple of minutes while the information is being uploaded. Then you might feel tired for several hours, since your brain needs some time to adapt to new data. But now you've decided to download much more than one profession. You want to upload an electronic library with millions of books to become the smartest person in the world. You put on a headset, start the program, but forget one simple important thing. Uh Uh-oh. The brain must process any information before you start actually using it. While sleeping, the human brain analyzes and processes all the information received during the day. Well, you start the machine and fall into an endless black abyss. 
you're climbing an incredibly high mountain. You don't remember how you got here or how long you've been doing this. All you know is that you have to get to the top. You pass through the clouds, the blue sky is replaced with black space. The top is higher than the ISS. You look at the mountain and see that it's not just a rock, but books. You climb an infinitely huge stack of books. Chemical formulas, fish, huge octopuses, tables with mathematical formulas flying around. You stop gripping, but don't fall. You float in space and fly to the top. Ooh, there's a shining light. You're getting closer and closer. Something happens, and you fall down at a great speed. Someone is pulling you to the ground. You come back to consciousness, slightly annoyed because such a beautiful dream ended. You wake up, but don't see or remember anything. In the dark, there are flashes of light, and you realize that your eyes are closed. You make an incredible effort and finally open them. You don't know where you are, and your brain is slowly uploading information about your surroundings. You want to get out of bed and understand what's happening, but can't. Your muscles just won't flex. You can't turn your neck. Every movement is hard and your mouth is dry. The eyes are closing since the eyelids are hard to keep open. You want to call for help, but you can't scream. Your vocal cords are too weak, and your jaw muscles don't allow you to open your mouth wide. Your friend comes into the room and tells you not to worry. She says you've been asleep for a month, and that's what's been happening with your brain and body all this time. Our dream consists of two parts. Not rapid eye movement, NREM, and rapid eye movement, REM. NREM sleep is the deepest sleep stage and consists of several parts. It's called so because our eyes don't move during this time. The brain's activity decreases and the mind rests. They say during NREM sleep, our subconscious mind turns on. It analyzes all the experiences you've had during the day. Then, the brain begins to slowly come out of the deep stage to the REM phase. Your eyes move quickly behind your eyelids, and you can see vivid dreams. The last two phases last about an hour and a half to two hours and change each other several times in one night. The NREM phase lasts most of this time, and the REM lasts 15 to 30 minutes. If your body gets enough sleep, you wake up right after the REM phase. If you need more rest, then you return to the deep phase after the REM phase. On average, a person goes through three to four phases per night. You've had more than 350 of these stages over the last month. The REM phase is important because it receives all the information from the subconscious and processes it. As a result, we see dreams. You may think the whole dream is meaningless, but it's connected with events and sensations we've experienced over the day. When you uploaded the library with a million books into your mind, it took much longer to process such an amount of information than a usual 8-hour sleep. You remember only a small part of your dream, and your consciousness doesn't feel that a whole month has passed. The whole processing of the downloaded knowledge was hidden from you by the subconscious mind. But you saw a little part. You dreamed you were climbing a peak that symbolized knowledge. This was your last REM phase in this dream. That's why you remember it so well. The level of your erudition is incredible now. But what's the point if you're completely helpless right now? Your physical body has been through an ordeal this month. During the first few days of sleep, your body doesn't change much. Your brain, knowing that you're asleep, produces a special hormone that causes the body not to produce… well, you don't want to go to the toilet. Also, during sleep, your body cools down slightly and your muscles relax completely. Without physical exertion, muscle fibers become weaker and smaller. You lose 1-5% to of your muscle mass every day. Blood circulation is disrupted, muscles don't receive nutrition and weaken so much that they completely turn off. After a month, they become like a thin layer of jelly. This applies not only to your arms and legs, your face can't express emotions and you can't open your eyes. A couple of days after falling asleep, the body begins to experience severe dehydration. After a week, a large percentage of the fluid in your body disappears. Moisture is extracted from skin tissues, fat, and muscles to maintain the overall health. To conserve moisture and the body's energy, your body cools down. After a couple of weeks, you're not much warmer than a can of soda from the fridge. A month later, you're more like a large chunk of ice. Every day, fewer and fewer vitamins and nutrients are distributed throughout your body. Imagine the bloodstream is a broad highway with thousands of cars where each car is some element necessary for the organism's functioning. 
Every day, the number of cars decreases, their speed getting slower. After a month, the road is almost empty. The metabolism is stopped. All your organs except your heart and lungs almost stop working because there's no need to. The kidneys don't filter the incoming moisture. The liver doesn't control the metabolism because no substances enter the body anymore. The lack of vitamins and nutrients makes your bones as brittle as glass. The brain also lacks nutrition. It continues to gain new knowledge, but its reaction speed and analytical abilities decrease. Almost all the remaining resources are directed to provide the brain with energy, but this is still not enough. After waking up, you may not understand for a long time where you are, who you are, and what's happening. The TV is turned on in front of you, and it will take you several seconds to realize it. Your heart rate is reduced several times. The heart isn't working at full strength. You breathe so slowly and so weakly that even a fly flying past your nose can hardly feel the breath. Your body now is like a laptop with a low battery level. The energy is only enough to show the image the computer needs charging. You would be both the smartest and most helpless person in the world. Fortunately, this didn't happen to you, because all this time you were helped by your friend. She fed you through a tube, gave you a complex of vitamins. Your body was covered with a blanket that creates electrical impulses. Not too powerful to hurt you, but capable of making your muscles contract. You were in good shape while sleeping. Of course, this is not enough to wake up and feel as good as new. In the first few minutes, it's still difficult for you to move. But after an hour, you get out of bed. In the next few weeks, you restore your nutrition, exercise to tone your muscles, meditate and do intellectual tasks to relieve your brain stress and restore your nervous system. New knowledge doesn't come immediately. It comes in waves every day. Today, you know all the works of avant-garde writers, and tomorrow, you understand the latest achievements in the field of neural surgery. With this knowledge, you decide to start studying sleep. You like the dream of climbing the mountain so much that you're about to create a device that can record your dreams. Your plan is to create a simple algorithm so that these dreams can be played on a computer screen once you wake up. Not even twins have tongue prints that are alike. The tongue is a movable and strong set of muscles that almost never gets tired. It contains anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 taste buds. Those little white and pink bumps on your tongue aren't taste buds, but each of them does have a bunch of them inside its surface tissue. Evolution gave us taste buds so that we can stay alive. For instance, sour and bitter flavors can be a sign that you may be eating rotten food or poisonous plants. The back of the tongue is more sensitive when it comes to bitter flavors, which is why we can spit out bad food before we swallow it. Salty and sweet tastes tell us if foods are rich in nutrients. By the time they're 60, the majority of people lose half their taste buds. Yes, your tongue is pretty cool, and its prints can be used for biometric authentication, just like fingerprints. Each of us have a different and unique tongue print. So, if you don't want to reveal your secret identity, Keep your tongue hidden. <laughs> that would be funny. Why do we even have fingerprints? Scientists had a lot of different theories, but they now believe it's because having them allows skin to stretch more easily. That prevents blisters, protects the skin from damage, and may improve our sense of touch. Humans are not the only ones with unique fingerprints. Koalas have them too. Only around 7% of people are left-handed. Left-handed people mostly chew food on the left side of their mouth, while right-handed people do so on the right. We lose almost 9 pounds of skin cells every year. Don't worry, we replace them quickly. We produce more cells than there are people living in the United States every 15 seconds. Our body is always regenerating, and we replace our skin hundreds of times during one lifetime. Yep, our body regenerates, except for our teeth. They're the only part of the body that can't heal itself. We have teeth that are similar to a shark's. Their teeth also have a thing called dentin inside of them, and theirs are just as strong as ours. Of course, theirs are sharper and bigger, but still. Teeth are part of the human skeleton, but they're not considered bones. You'll spend approximately 38 days of your life brushing your teeth. And guess what? It's possible to brush them too much. That can make them more sensitive because it wears down the natural enamel. 
Your left and right lungs are not the same size. The right one is bigger because the left shares its real estate with your heart. Hiccups are something almost all mammals go through from time to time, not just humans. The record was set by a man named Charles Osborne. He couldn't stop hiccuping for 68 years. Guess no one told him about the whole eating sugar trick. There's only one part of your body that doesn't get a regular delivery of blood, your corneas. They get oxygen directly from the air. Our eyes can differentiate between 10 million different colors. The muscles that help our eyes focus on something make around 100,000 movements a day. If you wanted to make your leg muscles do the same amount of work, you'd need to take a long walk, at least 50 miles. We can't all see infrared light or ultraviolet radiation. Only 1% of us can do that. And if you can see one of those, it doesn't necessarily mean you can see the other. Research says blue-eyed people all over the world may be related, or at least share a very distant ancestor. Scientists looked at blue-eyed individuals from Turkey, India, Jordan, and Scandinavia. They all had the same eye color gene sequences. They believe this trait comes from one blue-eyed person whose genes mutated around 10,000 years ago. Before that, people's eyes were just all different shades of brown. People with blue eyes are generally a bit more sensitive to pain than individuals with other eye colors. We blink about 20 times in one minute, which means we do it more than 10 million times a year. That thing about being similar to sharks, well, that goes for our eyes, too. If part of your eye gets damaged, you can replace it with a shark's. We can't sneeze with our eyes open. Try it. It's really hard to override your built-in reflexes. Eyelashes have their own life, too. One single lash lives for about 150 days before falling out. We all get goosebumps when we hear good news, our favorite song, or when it's ridiculously cold in the frozen food aisle. It's a reflex we got from our ancestors. It happens when you release adrenaline. It makes your hair stand on end and helps you look more imposing. Rawr. Scary, huh? The human brain has 100 billion neurons and a memory capacity that's equal to more than 4 terabytes, which is a lot. Your brain uses more than a quarter of all the oxygen your lungs take in, and it's mostly water, more than 75%. Stay hydrated, people. It's not true that humans use only 10% of their brain. We use much more than that, even when we're asleep. Most of our brain is constantly active. We just don't use all parts of it at the same time. Out of all the species out there, humans are the only ones who can blush. It comes from a rush of adrenaline. When you see your face turn red, know that your stomach is turning red too. <laughs> How weird is that? When you crack your knuckles, the sound you're hearing is tiny gas bubbles being released. There are pockets of gas trapped between your joints. So when you stretch them, they make a popping noise. Oh, so satisfying. Ah. We use 43 muscles when we frown, but only 17 when we smile. No scientists are still arguing over this one. Say cheese. An average person eats around 33 tons of food over a lifetime. That's six elephants worth. We breathe in approximately 2,900 gallons of air on a daily basis, but we can't swallow and breathe at the same time. Most people need about seven minutes to fall asleep, and we're just about the only living creatures that sleep on our backs. Randy Gardner decided to set the record for the longest period without sleep. The year was 1964, and he stayed awake for 11 days. That's 264 hours. Guess he had pretty noisy neighbors. Amongst all animals, humans are the only ones with chins. When you're thirsty, it means the water loss you're experiencing is equal to 1% of your total body weight. If it goes past 5%, you might even faint. During your lifespan, your body goes from having 300 bones to 206. Over half of all your bones are in your feet, your ankles, hands, and wrists. The biggest human bone is the thigh bone, and the smallest one is called the stirrup bone. It's inside your eardrum. Your nose can recognize a trillion different scents and remember 50,000 of them. Also, women are better smellers than men, and our sense of smell is 10,000 times more sensitive than our sense of taste. 
our lungs have a surface area that's almost equal to the area of an entire tennis court. So what's up with that feeling you get when you're going over a crest on a roller coaster and your stomach jumps up into your throat? Well, the seatbelt keeps your body in place, but your stomach, intestines, and smaller internal organs get a little airtime. It doesn't do you any harm, but your nerves can't figure out what's going on. They really think your stomach has jumped all the way into your throat. We're all taller in the morning because throughout the day, the cartilage between our bones gets compressed. That makes us around one fingernail shorter by the end of each day. Nose and ears, parts of our body that never stop growing. It's mostly thanks to gravity. The veins and arteries inside your body are long enough to make two trips around the world. Blood makes up about 8% of your body weight. When you listen to music, your heartbeat syncs with the general vibe of the song. So choose wisely. Your skin is the biggest organ you have. It counts for about 15% of your total weight. Get this, you can burn more calories during sleep than when watching TV. Hmm, then what about sleeping while the TV's still on? You can't recall a memory all by itself. When you're trying to think of one detail, like the color of the t-shirt your friend was wearing the other week, you'll remember some other details too. For example, the place where you saw him, things you were talking about. The hippocampus is the part of your brain that stores memories. It usually packs them together, including multiple small details. On average, taste buds last 10 days. Clusters of sensory cells in your tongue. The buds that are closer to the surface are more short-lived. That's the reason you don't have to wait for too long to be able to taste again after burning your tongue. One theory says deja vu is some sort of a brain processing lag. Scientists think it might happen when your brain is transferring information from one side to the other, and there's a split-second delay in that process. That means that your brain gets the same information twice and processes it as the event that happened before. Only 30% of people can flare their nostrils, and one-third can bend their thumb backward. Some people can produce a roaring noise in their heads. All they have to do is tense their ears or jaws. There's a small muscle in the ear. It dampens loud sounds, like when you're chewing. But some people can flex that muscle, and that creates an audible rumble. Your fingertips are sensitive, but hundreds of times less so than your lips. You inhale lots of different types of debris, including 700,000 of your own skin flakes, and that's only in a day. A hypnic jerk is a twitch you can experience when falling asleep. It's an abrupt muscle movement that comes during the non-REM sleep phase. It can create an illusion of falling. One of the theories is that when you're dozing off, your brain sees the relaxing of your muscles as a sign you're in trouble and really falling. So it sends signals to the muscles to protect you by tensing up. Synesthesia is a special and rare ability where people can taste music or hear colors. Only one in every 2,000 people has it. For some people, cilantro may taste similar to soap because the plant contains a chemical used in soap making. But only 4 to 14% of the world's population have special genes that can detect it. 18% of people can move both ears at the same time, while 22% can move one ear at once. People who do it use weak vestigial muscles we got from the ancestor humans, who had this in common with cats. <coughs> Bruises change their color over time. A bruise appears because there's bleeding under the skin. Tiny blood vessels get crushed, and some blood gets trapped in there. In the beginning, a bruise is red because the blood is rich in oxygen, but then it turns purple, green, yellow, or even gray when the levels of oxygen drop. Sweat doesn't smell itself. The unpleasant odor is caused by bacteria on your skin. When sweat comes out of the pores on your body, the bacteria breaks it down into acids. What most deodorants actually do is get rid of the bacteria on your skin. People used to dream in black and white much more than today. That's because they watched black and white TV. Blue cheese is another thing that affects your dreams and makes them more vivid. Eggshells might be used for growing new human bones. Chicken eggshells contain calcium carbonate, which is something you also have in your bones. 
The food on the plane is likely to taste different than on the ground. That's because you lose up to 30% of your taste bud sensitivity due to the dryness and pressure in the cabin. It's especially true about salty and sweet foods. Your nostrils don't work with the same efficiency all the time. When you breathe, one nostril does most of the work, and they switch every couple of hours. You wouldn't be able to taste food without saliva. Your taste buds have chemo receptors that recognize different flavors, but they need some liquid for those flavors to bind into their molecules. Also, you can't taste things saliva doesn't dissolve. The brain can't actually feel pain. It does have a pain center, but it doesn't have pain receptors itself. When your head hurts, you can feel it because of the nerves, tissues, and blood vessels around your brain. A single human hair can support 3.5 ounces of weight. That's how much two candy bars weigh. Toenails grow almost four times more slowly than fingernails that get more exposure and are used more frequently. There must be at least some photos where you have red eyes. When the camera's flash goes off, your eyes aren't prepared for such an influx of light. Your pupils remain dilated, which is why the light gets reflected off the red blood vessels of the choroid. This is a layer of tissue at the back of your eye that nourishes your retina. The right lung is bigger than the left one because your body needs to make some room for the heart. Your teeth are the only part of your body that can heal itself. The masseter is the strongest muscle you have, based on its weight. Together with the rest of the raw muscles, it can close your teeth with a force of 200 pounds on the molars and 55 pounds on the incisors. Onions produce a special chemical irritant. It stimulates special glands in your eyes, causing them to release tears. Your nose can memorize up to 50,000 different scents and detect more than one trillion of odors. We all have our unique smell, except for identical twins. This smell is partly determined by genetics, but it also depends on your diet, hygiene, and the environment. Eating snow is not the best way to stay hydrated. Your body needs too much energy to turn it into water. Snow can provide a bit of hydration, but it'll also lower the temperature of your body, which isn't the best scenario if you're trying to survive harsh winter conditions. You burn somewhere between 100 and 200 calories per hour while standing. Sitting burns 60 to 130 calories, depending on your height, weight, gender, and age. Brain freeze is an annoying ice cream headache. That's how your brain tells you to slow down and maybe stop eating something that's so cold. The main purpose of eyelashes is to shield your eyes and protect them from sand, moisture, dust, and debris in the air. Your eyelashes sense when something comes up too close to your eyes, like an insect flying toward you, and trigger your blink reflex. Blinking also helps when you need to flush out some tiny particles or debris stuck in your puncta. Those are small openings you have in your eyelids. That's where the tears get pumped out. Your eyebrows stop sweat from running directly into your eyes. Your skin there and the shape of your bones also work together to direct the sweat toward the sides of your face. We're not the fastest, strongest, or biggest in the animal kingdom, but we're the best at long distance running. That's because we have long legs and our bodies can lose excess heat through sweating. Even long ago, our ancestors hunted animals by chasing them for long periods of time. Eventually, it wore smaller creatures out. Five basic senses are taste, touch, sight, sound, and smell. But people have more senses than that. Proprioception is when your body is aware of its parts and their position, even if you don't see them. Like if your arm is behind your back, you know it's there. If you were an octopus, you wouldn't know it, because these creatures don't know their arms exist if they can't see them. Thermoception is your ability to sense temperature. Equilibrioception is a sense of balance. You also have nociception, which means you can feel pain. Then there's chronoception. That's how you can sense time passing by. There are even more senses found in the animal kingdom. Electroreception and magnetoreception, but people don't have those. You can't see your taste buds. Those little bumps on the tongue are lingual papillae. There are four kinds of them. Circumvallate, foliate, fungiform, filiform. They are all covered with taste buds, except for the last one, filiform. This one is responsible for the sense of touch in your tongue. 
Your pinky holds 50% of the total strength in your hand. Your liver is a very important organ that works a lot and is responsible for 500 individual functions. Up to 10% of it is made of fat. The liver can regenerate. You can burn calories when you take a hot bath, as many as you would if you took a half hour walk. People mostly need seven minutes to fall asleep. This time gets shorter if you've just had a large tasty meal. On average, the heart is as big as your fist. It beats 115,000 times and pumps around 2,000 gallons of blood a day. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay 